In the first part of solving linear equations by graphing, we took a standard form linear equation and we turned it into a slope-intercept format. And that was okay, that works, um, but there are other ways to do it that may be quicker in some instances, and I'm going to show it to you. And then there's a couple of other special instances where the y equals mx plus b doesn't quite look like y equals mx plus b, but they're fairly easy to plot. So, here we go. All right, we're going to start off with the same two problems that we had in part one. And this time we're going to solve them a little bit differently. We're going to find out where to plot things. Before we, we went out and we got the slope and the y-intercept, and we plotted the y-intercept, found the slope, and plotted the line. Well, this time I want to do it a little bit different. This time I'm going to take an x, I'm going to take a y, I'm going to set x equal to zero, and I'm going to set y equal to zero. I'm going to do that for both of us, but we're going to do this one first. So, look at what we've got now. We've got x equals zero, and we've got y equals zero. Well, we know that when we do slope-intercept, the b, which is the y-intercept, actually means this is where it crosses the line when x equals zero. So we do find that doing the other one, but we never find the x-intercept. We don't need to. So, let's do these real quickly. So if I were to say um, 2 times 0, that means 0. So what I have left, if x equals 0, is 5y equals 20. So let's say, solve 5y equals 20. 5y equals 20. Right? If 5y equals 20, divide both sides by 5 we get that y equals 4. Let's put that in our table. It's going to be a useful thing to have, this little table here. All right, y equals 4. Now, if I say that y equals 0, that means 5 times y is 0, that means I have 2x equals 20. And, of course, when we say 2x equals 20. We divide both sides by 2. We, we, we get the result that x equals 10. So now I have two coordinate pairs that I can plot. 0, 4 and 10, 0. So I'm going to plot them. I'm going to go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4. And I'm going to go with 10, 0. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's my 10, 0. Alrighty, so now I have two points. So if I, ooh, wee, this is going to be a long line to plot. And if I don't find my ruler, it's going to be a difficult plot to draw. I'm going to have to make, make a super wild guess at it. Pardon my head. Not bad. The way you do that is you put your pen on the first point and don't look at the pen or the point. Look at the point you're headed for. That's the way that's done. So. All right. Now the other side, we're going to do the same kind of thing. We're going to do it in a different color, though. All right. I'm going to have a table. I'm going to have X y. I'm going to set x equal to 0, then y equal to 0, and I'm going to come up with the answer. All right. Well, if I have x equal to 0, 6 times x is 0, I have minus 3y equals 6. So let's go with that. Minus 3y equals 6. Divide both sides by negative 3. Don't forget your negative sign. I wind up with y equals negative 2. All right. And we do the second part. We set, we set y equal to 0, and we wind up with 6x equals 6. 6x equals 6. All right. And when we do our division on that, we discover, not to our surprise, that x equals 1. 
So now we have two more coordinate pairs to plot. We have 0 minus 2, x is 0, y is minus 2, 1, 2. And we have that x is 1 and y is 0, so that's this point here. And if we plot those two points, we wind up with a line. something like that. And our intersection point is right here, which is 3 and 2 and a half, excuse me, 2 and a half and 3. So our coordinate pair for the solution is 2 and 1 half and 3, just like before. Now, we have three other possibilities here that I put on the board. We have two of them that look like you don't have enough information to plot a line. But we do. Because this is still y equals mx plus b. You got your y. You got your mx, but uh, where's my b? Well, my b is plus 0, and when we write down an equation, we don't write down plus 0. It's a waste of our time. So, if my b is a plus 0, that means my y-intercept is a 0, and that's right there. And then my m is still my slope, 1, 2, 3, up, over 1, bingo, bingo, and now I have a line with a slope of 3. Well, how about this guy? y equals mx plus b. Where's my m? Well, it turns out that y equals 0x plus 5 is what it defines as. Well, 0x comes out to be 0, and well, once again, I don't write down zeros. So, that means my y-intercept in this equation is a positive 5. So, I'll draw my line right-handed as well as I can. There we go. And it turns out the intersection of these two pairs happens to be 1 and 5. Well, not quite. It looks like 1 and a half and 5. So, there you go. So that's those two. How about x equals 4? Well, if x equals 4, I run into a situation where what I've got is an infinite slope. So x plus 4 equals 0. Doesn't matter what the x is, it's always going to equal 0. That y is always going to equal 0. So what do I do? Well, without any, so x equals 4 no matter what the y is. So I go out to here and since this is a horizontal line, this one here is a vertical line. If you have a pair that says y equals 5 and x equals 4, you've got your answer. x equals 4 or y equals 5, and there's your intersection point at 4, 5. And that's all there is to those three. No big mystery. We have a y-intercept of 0. We don't write it down. We have a slope of 0. We don't write it down. And we have that x equals 4, no matter what. Okay? So those are the last three. I hope this has been a little bit help, especially in the test here.